Hi, everyone. I'm Kate Smith, and this is the seventh episode of Planned Parenthood Presents the State of Abortion. This week, we're talking about the business and economic impact of the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade. And to do that, I'm joined by Tinder's Global Chief Marketing Officer, Melissa Hopley. And Melissa joins me now. Thank you so much for being here. Kate, thanks for having me. It's awesome to be with you. So let's start with Tinder specifically. What are some of the benefits that your company offers employees who are seeking sexual and reproductive health services? Sure. Well, one of the things that happened in this post-row world is we had to go back and change and add and develop new policies and benefits. So today, uh, Tinder will cover all travel expenses related to getting healthcare access for that employee and a companion. So hotel, airfare, uh, gas, whatever that is, we will cover it outside of the immediate issue of getting access to abortion and healthcare. It is uh, gender affirming care. We will cover that. It is fertility and IVF and surrogacy and a number of areas uh, that we know our employees need. How does that work logistically such that employees can you know, maintain their privacy while they're accessing those benefits? For Tinder employees that seek out these benefits, it is provided through our insurance providers. So we will never see or know uh, the services care that they need. In a pre-row world where you would dialogue and interact directly with your healthcare provider, we won't know or see or have access to any of that private healthcare information. What are you hearing from your employees that are working in states that do have abortion bans in place? Do they want to leave? Are they demanding benefits? You know, I think the reactions are all over the board. Some people are saying, I I want to move. I want to leave. That's why you also want these local governments to realize is the economic impact of people choosing to leave their state. So not paying taxes in their state, not buying houses, not shopping at Walmart or Target or going to Chili's. I, you know, what, what are the implications of that? Um, so there are certainly people that want to leave. There are people that want to stay and fight and fight for change. Moving your family or even moving as someone who's single and young is a, is a really big decision and difficult and expensive on its own. I'm curious, you as a, as a C-suite leader of a major company, how do you see these abortion bans impacting talent and acquisition and just kind of moving forward in this business world? We actually can't overstate the impact that the abortion restrictions in the U.S. will have on thousands, tens of thousands of businesses, small and large, the impact on universities and colleges, the impact on the the medical field. It is a very big topic of conversation in corporate America. We cannot even fully quantify how significant the, the these new laws are going to be. And, and, and then what that just also just means for women who have been trying to progress in the workforce, thinking about the the generational consequences of what this will do um, is is very disheartening and saddening. I know we often talk about Roe in the context of a public health crisis, but can you contextualize how much of a setback this decision was for gender equality in the workplace? The fall of Roe has absolutely devastating implications on equity in the workforce. As someone who's been in corporate America a long time, you feel like there's been progress. And this is, it's not two steps forward, one step back. It's like you took two steps forward and then there was a sinkhole and the sinkhole then like turned into the bottom of a volcano, which then like turned into like, the, I mean, I, like, I like could go on and on, but it's not, it's not one step back. It's like, you know, a landslide to hell. It's just devastating is, is the word for it. How do you see this impacting future generations of workers? You know, I think the impact on the fall of Roe for future generations of workers is also going to be really substantial. On the one hand, one of the positives is going to be a generation, hopefully, that is highly engaged. But then the setback for, you know, an entire generation, if you look around at how male dominated industries are and even local businesses, right? Like how much change still has to go. This is, we've just put a giant, giant challenge in the way of that progress. 
What are you telling your corporate leaders at other corporations on how getting them involved in the fight, getting them inspired the same way that you are? What I share with with colleagues and friends of mine uh, at other businesses, um, especially the executives, is there's a business case for taking a stand on social and political issues. There is a business case for speaking on row. Every single week, there is a piece of research that says Gen Z is going to over-index on what did this company say about this issue? How did they react? I think we can lead by example. I think we can look at other brands and their companies and say, you know, uh, how are you engaging? This is what we've done. So to your point, supporting abortion rights as a business isn't just the right thing to do. It's also just good for your business in the bottom line. It is good for business. So it's kind of a no-brainer then. <laughs> I think this is a no-brainer. There is a business reason. Um, there is a business reason to, to engage and support. So for employees that are watching this and they want some of these benefits, they want their company to offer them these benefits as a C-suite executive, what do you recommend those employees do to get their bosses, their managers to listen and to make some changes? Yeah, so I, that's a great question. The first thing I would do is ask. The more employees that are reaching out and asking for those things, uh, the better you are, you, you are increasing the chances that that company is going to sit down and come up with a response, that they're going to say, we know that our employees care about this. Melissa, thank you so much for all your time, for all the work that you've done for not only just your employees, but also giving your users a chance to tell the world that they support abortion rights as well. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Kate.